Uh, good morning, folks. Welcome back to the farm. <laughs> it is a balmy minus 24 here this morning. Just beautiful. And looks like we got about seven or eight inches of snow here overnight. Which, whatever. It's supposed to... Oh, geez, that's deep. That's... You can see that up to the top of my boots. So, <laughs> more than seven or eight inches of snow. Anyways, man, I'm going to have to trudge here big time. I need my snowshoes. <laughs> What was I even talking about? Okay, yeah, lots on the go today. I got to build a mineral feeder. We're also uh, working on a little project for the wife. She wants a, a bench and like a storage bench in the front entryway. We've kind of been picking the project up, dropping it off, picking it up, dropping it off, procrastinating maybe. I don't know what you would call it for several months, but she's nesting now because she's she's like seven months pregnant. So it's time to get on with actually doing some real projects. Man, oh man, yeah, you can see. All the snow in front of the shop here. I'm gonna have to shovel my way into the shop. I'm gonna have to shovel my way into the chicken houses. It's gonna be an interesting morning. Ooh, I made it in. That that snow is something else today. Anyways, mineral feeders. What I want to do, as as you guys well know, we use these lick tanks that we get from Blue Enterprises, and they have the adaptive ball in it. I'll just see if I can do this with one arm. Flip it over. You can see the ball in there. All right. So it it's a floating ball inside of a column of fluid. And so we fill these tanks with eight gallons of molasses. It's actually a 28% protein sheep supplement. So it's not just molasses. It's actually got all the nutrients and minerals that they need. So we're able to deliver that as a feed supplement, also as a mineral supplement. So it's kind of a two-for-one deal. We don't have to feed any additional mineral on top of this. We do keep a free choice salt lick out there just, just because. But largely we find that they don't even touch it. The, the challenge we have with this, I mean, you just <laughs> you just saw it outside, is that we get snow on top of snow on top of snow on top of snow. And this thing is, you know, eight inches deep or, or thereabouts. And sometimes you come out and, and this is gone. Like, we have, like where, where did it go? And so what I want to do is I want to build a little feeder, a little raised feeder to get this a little bit higher off the ground because the sheep don't, they don't need, this isn't like it's, work for optimum height for, you know, the sheep to go down and lick it or anything like that. This is just, you know, the adaptive ball piece, which by the way, is very hard to come by, is only eight inches long. And so the depth of the tank is set accordingly. But, you know, I, I can afford to come up another four inches and the sheep will still happily get their mineral. So I wanna put this on a little kind of a skid thing that maybe in the summertime I can pull it around a little bit easier. When you put this full, eight, eight gallons full of molasses in here, that's a pile of weight. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's a bend your knees, not your back kind of lift, right? So to have it on a, on a bit of a skid might be, might be beneficial during the winter months as well. Might be beneficial if I need to move it around. I can just pull it on like a little, like a, like a toboggan kind of thing. Uh, but I want, it, I want it raised up off the ground a little ways so that if we do get freezing or melting or whatever, a whole pile of snow, this tank itself isn't frozen in and buried in the ground because that's i have one on the other side of the shop over here that i haven't seen in a month because <laughs> simply because it, we got a whole pile of snow i lost track of where it was i tried to probe, probe around in there but we had freeze thaw freeze thaw freeze thaw and i'm not going to see that tank until probably april let's be honest right so if i can get a little bit more elevation that'd be handy now in order to build this i'm just going to use you know, scrap two by six or scrap two by eight or some stuff that I have laying around. I'm not going to go to the lumber yard and spend a whole bunch of money on this, but uh, I think it should be a fairly quick project. The other thing, like I said, we're working on, this is the wife's uh, bench lid. You know, she's working for, it's under seat storage in the bench. So she got that all stained up yesterday, spray painted the hinges black. So I'm going to have to drag the air compressor in because there's some, also some, what do, what do we call this? Shiplap, tongue and groove board reclaimed tongue and groove board from uh well, i think we got this from a buddy of ours that had this stored behind a shed but hate to see it go to waste because it's absolutely gorgeous wood so we're going to put that uh, as part of an accent wall that goes in the back of the bench and then in the front of the bench the back of the wall is already done she's already painted it like a nice chalky white and we're going to do the front of the bench yet get that bench seat on there and then do some uh over the bench shelving and probably some coat hooks or something like that in the back. 
So this is what I'm talking about. This is the one feeder we have in here behind the shop that I do know where it's at. You can see him just licking the ball there with the excess amount of snow we got. That thing's all but completely buried and could very easily get completely lost. Got some hay forked over to the girls. These V feeders that we made, we made these out of an old IBC tote actually, the cage. And I tell you, they have been an absolute godsend when it comes to reducing feed waste and not having your animals just drag, you know, free run over a round bale, and just drag hay all over your yard and trample and poop on it. They pretty much get out of there whatever they're gonna eat at that particular moment reduce feed waste uh, pretty effectively so we actually made a couple of videos on how to do that so if you want to go back and search that on our channel be very very handy very cheap alternative to buying you know four or five six hundred maybe even eight hundred dollar v feeders from your local feed store well, i managed to dig my way into the chicken house here and uh i'm just gonna open the hatch and you can see how much snow we got <laughs> they're not getting out there there's maybe yeah about an inch of daylight poking through the top so i'll have to clear that out for them tomorrow they're probably not even gonna go out today but tomorrow it's supposed to warm up to like zero or plus one so they're gonna want to go outside um while i'm in here though a year ago today i uh, i redesigned this hanging chicken feeder here now redesign I, I don't take a lot of credit for it but i did add this ring basically i took the bottom off a barrel and used a hole saw and what I did, I just lower it down like that. And you can see how the chickens stick their head in there and they poke. What chickens like to do, if that's not there, is they'll go in there and they will literally just swipe and shovel with their beaks for the tasty bits. So having that on there has significantly reduced the amount of feed waste that we have from our chickens. So if you don't currently have that on your chicken feeder, highly recommend it's easy to do right find an old barrel use this as a template use that as a template cut it out use a inch i think it was an inch and a half hole saw that i used for this piece and uh yeah significant reduction in cost feed like many other things we do here on the farm i did video that so i'll leave the link to that video in the description down below now you might recall from previous videos that our chickens are free range. I'm pretty proud of that. They got a whole run of 143 acres. So you might be asking yourself, well, why is the hatch closed in the chicken house? Well, I have a general rule of thumb when it hits minus 30, it's a really good time to close the chicken house door because otherwise there's a whole lot of complications around animal welfare and freezing of eggs. That's a lost revenue right there. That's a good enough reason right there. But uh, so minus 30, usually close the hatch on the chicken house. And that usually lasts, you know, two, three days at a time. Not two, three weeks, four weeks at a time. We've had a very extended cold spell here. Man, I can't even see Took sliding down. But uh, finally, tomorrow, things are gonna warm up and they'll be able to venture outside again. So I'm just over here by the bulk molasses tank, just filling up my bucket. You can see at minus, what do they say it was? Minus 26 or something like that. Still pouring. In fact, all the way to minus 38. We still got it to come out of the tank. It was slow, but it still comes out. So, I mean, that's an excellent source for, if it sits out in a feeder and you're concerned, well, is it just gonna turn into a block of ice? This stuff we get, uh, we get it through Bloom Enterprises, obviously, as you can see, but it's a, it's a Westway sheep product. So fantastic for winter operations. And I mean, <laughs> trudging through this, it's tough to see, you can't see the contours because it's gonna get snow blindness, but. Yeah, I mean, kind of trudging through here, it was, you can see the snow in my coveralls all the way up to the top of my knees. So, I mean, I'm six foot four and it's up to my knees. So it's definitely, uh, definitely a challenge getting around today. Well, the horses here, that was the last batch of critters I got to feed here this morning. And everywhere I've been going, I've been, I've been blazing a trail through the snow that's four feet wide because it's, it's as wide as me. And then I'm packing those two five gallon buckets over there. So I'm just literally plowing a trail. And yeah, most of the yard, the stuff around the shop is to, is to the knee or just above the knee. But some of the stuff in the open yard on the hilltop here is almost to the, uh, almost to the loins. So <laughs> I'm having to gird up my loins for, uh, for chores this morning. I think I'm gonna head back. I'll, uh, I gotta take the stuff, the, the air compressor, the, uh, what do you call that? The air nailer 
and we'll get the wife's project in the house done while I have a cup of tea. And then I'm gonna probably bring out the leaf blower, which if you don't have a leaf blower for snow removal, trust me, try and pick one up at an auction or you know on the buy and sell somewhere. It is a game changer. You know, it, whether it moves snow any faster or not, it definitely reduces a lot of workload and it's quite fun. But uh, yeah, I got one. So we're gonna clear the deck off. We're gonna clear the vehicles off with that. And then uh, and then this, we're gonna go swimming this afternoon with Charlotte. If we can get to town, we'll see what the roads are like. If, if we can't or, or later on the evening anyways, I'm gonna work on that mineral skid for the molasses slick tank. In, uh, and that's gonna be in the nice warm workshop. Don't you worry, there'll be no outside projects today. Back in the shop now, finally kind of defrosted, got the mustache all uh, cleaned up a little bit. Anyways, as I said, later today I'm going to be making a, uh, like a skid for this thing, and I need some scrap wood. Well, here, not, not two steps away, I actually have a 2x6, and I, or sorry, a 2x8 and a 2x4 that look to be right around the perfect length. So this is 20 inches by 12 inches. And we're going to try to make the skid four inches longer on each side just so that it has it's kind of like skis right and i got a little spot i can drill a hole through and if i want to you know put a rope on it or something like that to pull it along i can do that when i build it i won't actually be putting a rope in there permanently and the reason for that is well if it's out there with a rope in it this time of year what's that rope going to do it's going to freeze in the ice and snow so for as handy as it is to have a skid if the rope that's attached to it is frozen in the ice that doesn't help me very much. So what I'm actually going to do next time I'm in uh, in town, not on a Sunday when hardware is hardware store is open, is I'm going to pick up some little eyelets and I'll just have a rope with a couple of you know cheap carabiners on it that I can just clip clip, tow my thing out and then unclip it and hang it back up in the tack shed and that'll that'll that should work awesome. But uh, yeah, right now I think I'm going to fire up the leaf blower. <laughs> The day's gone a little bit sideways on me, as you can see. Two hoods up in the air. We've got, I don't know how many inches of snow. An unfathomable amount of snow. And uh, so we did go swimming, but the roads are absolutely treacherous. And I thought, well, I better, once we get back, I better get plowed out here because otherwise we're, we're not going anywhere tomorrow. I got my truck moved, pulled out of the way. Went to grab Carmen's truck. It's not going anywhere. Stone dead battery. Well, there's no power. I won't say stone dead battery, but there's no power going to the key. I couldn't even unlock the door with the uh, key fob. So that was lovely. Anyways, hopefully get this thing boosted here. And then, uh, you know what I'm really hopeful is that there's going to be a uh, there's going to be like a light on inside or something or or the headlights left on well the headlights aren't left on but something easy that i can be like oh okay this is simple you know tell the wife hey don't do that again but i'm looking in the cab doesn't look like the interior lights on the headlights weren't on so i have no idea why the battery's dead but i gotta get this thing boosted and get it out of the way because i got like 24 inches of snow to plow out of the yard for the ninth time in seven days Fired right up, I don't know. I'll get it moved, get it parked over the shop, and they can sit there and run for an hour while I plow snow. Well, I just got done plowing snow, and it was it was way more fun than you would uh, have thought. I ended up getting the front end of the tractor over the edge of the ditch when I was trying to push snow up right at the end of the driveway, and just kind of got fish hooked over there. And I thought, okay, well, whoa, I'll just use the bucket and try and push myself out. But try as I might, because the grapple's on, I can't get a big enough, I can't get a big enough bite with the bucket because the grapple's touching the ground. Front wheel assist doesn't work. The brakes don't work. So even if I get myself pushed back, every time I go take a new bite, it just rolls forward, rolls forward, rolls forward. Instead of having the wife, thank goodness I boosted that truck. Because, uh, yeah, I was able to just roll it over there hook a toe strap to it, 
and apply some forward, or I guess backwards pressure, forwards pressure for the truck, backwards pressure for the tractor, and uh, and then just pull myself out of there. And I still haven't built a mineral feeder yet, so <laughs> I promise I will get to it. But I'm gonna go have a bite of supper here right now, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cut those boards, and we're gonna make this uh, we're gonna make this mineral skid. Well, folks, I'm back from supper. It's amazing what a little. <laughs> bite of food can do for your mood anyway so i'm all done with the tractor nonsense that's fine and i've got my uh i wouldn't this is not really scrap wood necessarily but it's it's cut off from another project and it's just been kind of sitting on the shop floor waiting for some you know good ideas to happen well here we go let's get back to actually building that mineral look like i promised and stop wasting everybody's time so this two by eight that I got here, I want that to be 28 inches long. So we'll go ahead, 28. And twice that should be 56. It looks like I'll even have uh, a little bit of fire starter left at the end of this one. So that'll be the two by eight. Now the two by four, we're gonna go 13. So the tank is uh, 12 and a half wide. So that'll give us a quarter inch of room on either side. So we'll go 13, 26, 39, and 52 if I recall. Should be about right. Looks right to me. Yep. Okay, let's get cutting. So I've got all my two by fours and my two by eights cut to length. Next I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna come across at a 45 degree angle and just nip the corner off right here. Same on the other side. The reason I'm doing that is, I mean the intent is to be able to, to pull it along, right? So have a little bit of a bevel there. It's gonna help get it over any kind of uneven terrain or it gets bound up with snow or something like that. Always a little bit of angle, just you can never really go wrong. Okay, so now all our cutting is done. We've got all our parts and pieces. I have my little impact drill and I've got some number eight, three inch, what they call multi-purpose screws with the number two Robertson head. Very commonly referred to here in Canada as a deck screw. And that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use the three inch just because, well, I don't need three inches, but not too many times I can say that. Anyways, uh, we're gonna use a three inch screw simply because that gives us lots of screw into the second board. And this is gonna be around animals. Animals have a tendency to knock things about. And so a little bit of extra securement is never gonna be a bad thing. So what we're gonna do, you can see what I've done with the first set of two by fours here. You know, I've got one this way and one like this. And I wanna make, I wanna make an L. So they're evenly spaced like that, but I want to make an L. And I'm going to do that with this set as well, but it's just going to be facing the opposite direction. So we'll go ahead and get our first screws in. Okay, so you can see I've got the two pieces of two by four screwed together in an L shape, and we're ready to assemble. Now, these two by eights, we're going to stand them up with the beveled side upwards. And then we're going to place the two by four that way. So two by four this way, right? Long side in. And we're gonna position it exactly two inches in from the leading edge of the skid. And then we'll go ahead and I'll just get a screw put in there just to kind of hold it for now. Perfect. And we're going to do the same at the back, but obviously it's going to face the opposite direction, right? The two by four, the flat side of the two by four is going to face the rear. And just like the opposite one, I'm gonna space it exactly two inches from the outside edge. Get my screw ready. So now 
I can go ahead and attach this other side. And I got a whole pile of screws to put in here to hold this together. So I won't, I'll, <laughs> I'll come back once I got it all screwed together. And then we'll flip it over and see if magic happens. All right, so all our screws are in. I think everything's where it needs to be. I guess it's time for the moment of truth. Let's get this puppy flipped over. As you can see, this is what I mean by it being a skid, right? You can skid it through the snow. Now, later on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill probably a, I don't know, 5 16 hole or something like that in here. And I'll put a stainless steel eyelet on either side like I mentioned earlier, to attach my rope to, clip, clip with a little carabiner, and I can pull this thing merrily, merrily through the snow. But let's see if my math was right, and if this lick tank actually fits in there. Look at that, folks. Ta-da! Nice, proper height off the ground. I'm not gonna lose this thing in the snow. And uh, if, if I do lose, lose in the snow, you know what? I don't mind chiseling around with a shovel or a pick around some old leftover two by eight that I had sitting in the shop. If I have this sitting on the ground and I chisel around with a shovel and I accidentally hit the side of that tank, well, I'll be spending another $125. But there you have it, folks. That's how to build a uh, little molasses mineral supplement skid for your sheep, for your goats. Um, Robin at Bloom Enterprises, I know himself, he's used these for his pigs, for his steers, in fact. So very, very versatile option. And in fact, this is the only delivery method for liquid supplement, mineral, protein supplement that we have here on the farm for our sheep. This is, I mean, the adaptable. I mentioned earlier, these things are hard to come by. These things come all the way from uh, the United Kingdom, which as some of you know, that's, that's where I grew up, right? The, the, the old homeland. But if you just go on the internet and you try and buy one of these, it's not going to happen, right? You got to find a distributor or be a distributor in order to get these. So I was pretty happy when the guy that's, you know, 10 miles up the road was able to get his hands on these. And they're a very, very versatile option. If this tank, for whatever reason, fails, I can pop this out, slide it back in another tank. And this is pretty much a, you know, it's a lifetime purchase, right? There's very, very little moving parts. There's a floating ball and there's just a column with a lock. So you rotate this thing out and it pops out. And uh, really, really simple technology, but fantastic for delivering all your supplement needs to your sheep, your goats, your pigs, whatever, whatever works for you. So. On that note, I'm going to let you go, folks, because I know there's a cup of tea in the house that's calling my name. So I hope you have a fantastic evening, and we'll see you tomorrow.